today I'm going to show you how to make sourdough bread. Here's everything you need to know to get the beautiful rise, the perfect little ear, and the best texture in the center. And I'm craving some sourdough bread, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is feed your sourdough starter. I like to do this early in the morning. Using a kitchen scale will be more accurate and easier to measure. In a jar, combine equal parts of sourdough starter, flour, and lukewarm water. For one loaf of bread, I'll do 50 grams of each. Most days when I'm making sourdough, I just go ahead and double everything and make two loaves, and that way I have sourdough throughout the week. Now thoroughly stir that together, scrape down the sides, cover with a loose fitting lid, and I like to put a rubber band around the jar to monitor how much it's rising. Let that rise at room temperature. With a healthy starter, you should see it more than double in volume within four to six hours. Our starter has risen beautifully and it's at its peak of activity. This is where you wanna use it for recipes. This is called an active starter. Now we're gonna make the bread dough in a large mixing bowl. And of course, we're gonna use our kitchen scale and zero it out for easy measuring. Now we're gonna combine the dry ingredients. We have our bread flour, and I like to add a little bit of rye flour or whole wheat for a little bit of color and flavor, but you could just use bread flour. Also make sure to add the salt. It's possible I have forgotten it before, and trust me, nobody wanted to eat my bread, so do not forget the salt. Whisk those together thoroughly, then we're gonna add the water. Make sure it's lukewarm water. You don't want it to be more than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, make sure to use filtered or spring water. Avoid chlorinated water, which can slow down the yeast activity. Next, add 100 grams of your active starter, and you can see how I was zeroing out the scale between each ingredient. This allows for just really efficient and accurate measuring. Stir with your spatula just until the dough comes together, then use your hands to really mix the dough thoroughly. Your hands are your best tool for this dough because you can feel when the flour is really well incorporated. I do like to pinch the dough as I'm mixing and it will be a very sticky and wet dough. That's what you want. I find it helps to use a flexible food scraper to help get the extra dough off of your hand and to clean the sides of the bowl. Cover the dough with a clean kitchen towel and let it rest at room temperature for four hours. This is called the bulk fermentation stage. Every hour you're gonna uncover it and with wet hands, because it will help keep the dough from sticking to you, gently lift up on one side of the dough and stretch it upwards. Make sure you don't tear the dough, then fold it over onto itself. Rotate the bowl a quarter turn and continue to stretch and fold about three more times or until the dough resists pulling. Keep coming back to it every hour to do your stretch and folds. This process helps to strengthen the gluten network and creates a better texture and rise in your final dough. Also, if your house is very cool, it does help to keep the dough in a warm spot, about 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. You can put this in an oven with the light on or just keep it in a warm spot in your kitchen. We're gonna do our fourth and final stretch and fold to tighten up the dough. And you can see that the dough has already puffed up, so it will resist more to pulling. You may be able to fit three, maybe four stretch and folds in this round. Now it's time to shape your loaf. Turn your dough out onto a lightly floured work surface. At this point, you wanna be careful not to break any of the air bubbles. So I find if you just turn your bowl over, it'll slowly ease its way out of the bowl. Start shaping your dough by stretching it out gently. For a round loaf, start at the top and fold the dough onto itself, gently pressing down in the center. Give the dough a slight turn and fold over the next section. Repeat until all four sides are folded in. Set the dough seam side down. Cup your hands around the dough and tuck the sides underneath to tighten up your dough ball. Cover that with a clean kitchen towel and let it bench rest for 20 minutes. If you find that your dough loses too much of its shape, you wanna re-tighten the loaf. Your goal is to create a tight skin on the surface of your dough. This will help ensure a better oven spring and more even rise. If it seems loose, quickly reshape it again to tighten the loaf. Cup your hands around the dough, tucking it underneath, then pull it towards you on the counter. This will help continue to tighten the skin of the dough. Our dough is now ready to transfer into our banneton bread basket. Generously dust your basket with flour. You can either use bread flour or my preference is rice flour because I feel like it creates a better crust and I will show you the difference later. Cover with a clean kitchen towel and refrigerate for at least eight hours or up to 48 hours. This cold fermentation stage really helps to develop the great sourdough flavor of the bread. When you're ready to bake, you can either use a Dutch oven or a cast iron combo cooker, which is my go-to. 
and I will link to these and all of my favorite tools for making sourdough bread in the notes. About 30 minutes before baking, set the Dutch oven or combo cooker in your oven and preheat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got my thermometer in there to make sure it preheats and I also have a pizza stone on the bottom level. This will keep the bottom of the bread from browning too much. Once your oven is fully preheated, it's time to score and bake your bread. You can keep your loaf refrigerated until it's time to bake. Also, if you wanna refrigerate your loaf for more than 24 hours, I do like to put it in one of these jumbo zip bags. That way it'll keep the loaf from drying out too much in the refrigerator. Now you're gonna put on some oven mitts and carefully bring out the preheated pot. I like to line the bottom with a little bit of parchment paper, then invert the dough right into the pan. Next, you'll need to score your bread. This is important to help the bread expand properly in the oven. I'm using a bread lom, which is just a razor blade attached to a handle. You can also use a sharp knife or a serrated bread knife. When you're slicing, go from one end all the way to the other, cutting almost parallel to the bread. You wanna be a quarter to a half inch deep. It's okay to go over it a second time, just be confident. Using your oven mitts, carefully cover with the hot lid and put it into the oven. Once it's in the oven, reduce the heat to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 20 minutes covered. I'm gonna quickly show you how to do this if you have a Dutch oven. Transfer the loaf onto a sheet of parchment paper, score the bread, then lift up the parchment paper and transfer into your hot Dutch oven. Now take the lid off and continue baking for another 20 to 25 minutes or until you've reached your desired color. Once the bread is out of the oven, transfer it to a rack and let it cool completely to room temperature before slicing into it. I wanna start by saying you can totally do this, okay? You've got this. Now you have all the tools and all the information you need to make a beautiful loaf of your own sourdough bread. As you can see, I made more than one loaf. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I was as thorough as I could be for you guys. And then also just take a look at these two loaves. You'll notice the difference right away in their crust. So this one is the one that I dusted the banneton with just bread flour. And you can see it has like a white crust because the flour gets kind of stuck to the edges there. It's still very pretty and I've made many, many loaves with this, but I feel like the rice flour is superior because look at this. It also dusts off really easy. That's why I keep a pastry brush to just kind of brush off a little bit of the excess and then it reveals the prettiest crust underneath. Look at that this. It's so lovely. You'll love the texture too, but really either one works. So if you don't have rice flour, whatever, you'll still get great bread. Okay. And we're going to pick the one that has cooled down completely to room temperature. You never want to cut open a loaf of bread that's still warm or hot because all the steam will evaporate and that steam needs to set into the bread so that it forms properly. Otherwise it'll get gummy and weird and just don't do it. <laughs> and this is our loaf that is already fully at room temperature. So we're going to cut right into it. Although I don't know, this one's kind of the ugliest one, but I'm telling you, it's still just as good. <laughs> I'm going to slice right in. You can hear that crust crunching under my knife. Oh, I love the sound. I'm so excited to show you guys what's inside. Okay, I think I just went crooked, but that's okay. All right, before I reveal what's inside, another thing that I wanted to show you guys is the difference it makes to put that pizza stone underneath your Dutch oven. Let's see which one was it that got a little bit dark? This one, look at this. And I have to thank my friend Marina from Let the Baking Begin. That's where I learned this trick. So this is with the pizza stone. Look at that, look at that. With the pizza stone, without the pizza stone. You see how it got kind of dark under there? I think this is better, okay? <laughs> Just a tip, you know? All right, here we go. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. The moment of truth. Dun, dun, dun. Look at that, look at that. It is so, so soft and it just reshapes when you squish it. Look at that, it is the airiest bread. My kids go bananas for this. It's so, so delicious, you guys will love it. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut myself a nice slice right now. I personally love the end pieces because it's extra crust. The crust is my favorite, can you tell? <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do and um, Honey, do we have butter? I feel like I need to have butter. Some salted butter for my taste test. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> yep, my favorite salted butter. This is non-negotiable for me. This butter makes everything better. We all know this, facts. Okay, it's a little bit hard. Usually I like to have some of this at room temperature so I can enjoy my bread. I literally always have a loaf of bread laying around all the time. Okay, here we go. Listen to the crunch. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I love how that crust is so crisp and chewy. The crumb is just airy soft. Oh, it's so good. And sourdough has so many good things going for it. It's easier to digest. It does actually have a lot of benefits over regular store-bought bread. So I hope you guys give this a try. Once you've mastered sourdough, there's so many sourdough things you can make. You're gonna love it. I've just begun my sourdough journey and I've been doing this for years. <laughs> and there's so many ways to serve this bread. Everything from sandwiches, my son loves avocado toast in the morning. It just goes well with everything. Peanut butter and jelly is next level. It also keeps really well. So I love to bake a couple loaves at once and I know our family will usually finish half a loaf within a couple days. And so what I do is once they're cooled down to room temperature, I'll cut them in half, store halves in the freezer. And if you freeze them the same day that they are baked, when you thaw, it's literally just like a fresh loaf. So I'll bake once a week. I've got bread in the freezer for the whole week and it's, life is good. <laughs> um, I will share all of my tips and tricks and recipe in the notes. I hope you guys try this. I hope this is the start to a very long and wonderful sourdough journey. If you guys have any suggestions for sourdough recipes, let me know in the comments. We'll see you in the next episode of Natasha's Kitchen. Bye. Oh, come to mama. Mm. Mm. Oh, I have a cookbook. It's really good. <laughs> I will link to it in the comments and let me know where you spotted Sharky. Okay, back to eating. <laughs> <laughs>